Hey guys, on this episode, we have Dana Mantilla, a cybersecurity social media expert. Dana specializes in educating people on common cybersecurity risks and how to protect yourself. We also talk about a new Department of Defense contract requirement that will have a major impact on manufacturing. To learn more, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. Without further ado, enjoy the show. Hey guys, this is Manufacturing Unscripted. I'm your host, Matt Rawl. Today I am joined with Dana Mantilla, a cybersecurity social media expert. Hey Dana, how are you doing? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, pretty excited. We, we kind of had a brief conversation before and, and you kind of opened my eyes in just a two minute conversation. So um, I'm pretty interested in hearing what you have to say. Uh, but before we do that, you're a first time guest. So I, I'd love to get to know a little bit more about you and, and your backstory a little bit. Sure, sure. So I came into this space through the identity theft protection world. We Mm -hmm. came out with a product several years ago, and that's when I realized how much education for regular people really needed to be done out there for scammers and identity thieves and cyber criminals. So I was trying to find a way to kind of speak to a generic audience that are not technical people that would Mm -hmm. be able to understand what I was trying to say. So I came up with these little videos that I would do on LinkedIn. And at first I thought, you know, I got to be careful with this because some of my videos are a little goofy and it's a really serious space, you know, identity theft. So I thought they're going to be like, who is this lady doing these kooky videos and laugh me off the stage? And luckily that didn't happen. So I think people started to appreciate some of the videos I did. I remember one of the earlier ones I did was on synthetic identity and I Mm -hmm. used my daughter's American girl dolls. And I talked about how somebody could steal someone's social security number, kid's social security number. And people started private messaging me. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know that was a thing and the good job with the dolls and stuff. So I kind of figured I was onto something. So anyway, moving down the road, I started doing some training with people and then that leading into cybersecurity training for non-technical employees. Mm -hmm. And then most recently, I've gotten involved with the Department of Defense has a new cybersecurity regulation that I yep. know we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Yep. But um, I wanted to get involved with that, but I'm not a technical person. So I thought, well, what am I going to do here? So I kind of created this little position where I'm, I act like I'm Oprah. I interview all these <laughs> cybersecurity professionals yep. over on my YouTube channel, yep. and it's doing really, really well. So my goal there is to help create this big library so that when people find out that in their contract with the Department of Defense, that they have to have this CMMC and they say, what in mm-hmm. the world is that? If they go to Google or YouTube and they type it in and then all my videos will come up there to help them. So that's okay. kind of where we are now. Yeah, no, I think I think adding a little goofy to it really helps make it more relatable. And, and I think, you know, cybersecurity is such a, a very big and endless, you know, black hole that I think it's very scary to people, not just in the sense of scary and that, there's a danger out there, but just that there's so much to kind of intake. So I think what you've done and kind of simplifying that to make it very, you know, clear as to like, this is what this means or, and make it relatable to, you know, the, you know, someone that isn't just totally immersed in that industry, um, I think is, is great. Yeah, well, it gets very intimidating very quickly. And anytime Mm -hmm. we start getting overwhelmed with anything, it doesn't matter what it is, we just shut down. And that's why I think a lot of companies have just ignored cybersecurity completely because somebody comes in there, they start explaining to them all this complex stuff that they don't understand. And all they're thinking is how much longer till this person stops talking Mm -hmm. so I can go back to my doing my job the same exact way that I did. And we really need to kind of just think about what if you think about physical security, there are certain people that have keys to certain buildings and certain rooms and certain areas. And it's the same kind of thing that we just have to do with data. Uh, But we just don't look at it that way. We look at it as, oh, it's very technical cybersecurity. So, well, not even just that too. It's you you look at it from like the entertainment media side of like, you see these video movies come out and it's the cool person that's doing all this hacking and stuff. And everyone's like, that's so cool. But you don't think of it from a real life perspective of, wow, they're actually doing a lot of damage to that company or to that individual at this point. And so I think there is kind of a, uh, like a facade a little bit in terms of what that is and how how much of a risk it is. And that's it's great to have you on because I think, you know, we can probably just, you know, jump right into it. And, and my first question is, is why is cybersecurity a really big deal? Well, it's a really big deal because it's affecting pretty much everybody. Everybody's using the computer nowadays. Everybody's on the internet. And 
one of the biggest things is that 85% of most of the problems that we're having are happening from the non-technical staff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with email. I mean, literally, if we removed email, like there was no such thing, mm -hmm. we would get rid of so many problems. And mm -hmm. If we just rewind just a little bit back, maybe 10, 15 years ago to when the Nigerian prince emails were coming yep. out, right? So we had these misspelled emails from a yep. Nigerian prince saying, we're, you're gonna, I'm going to send you millions of dollars, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just so silly because obviously you knew this is this is ridiculous. So everybody kind of, that was our level of, of training for level one of yep. uh, phishing emails. And now, unfortunately, they've gotten really, really good. They look like yep. they're from Amazon and FedEx. And, you know, a lot of us are online shopping, shopping especially since COVID. Yep. We're working from home and people aren't set up securely. So it, it is, it's something that's affecting everybody, but we have to make sure that when we say that it's affecting everybody, mm -hmm. that everybody can understand how they can protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely uh, uh I can't I can't explain how many times I've probably my mom and my grandma, my mother-in-law and, and they say, "Hey, I'm getting emails." I'm like, "Don't. Just log on directly through their website. If they mm -hmm. have an issue with anything in your account, they will tell you on your account. Do not click any links in the email. Delete the email." You know, mm -hmm. Go to Amazon.com, log in, and they'll have the same issue right there if there is indeed an issue. I yeah, like, and same thing that now it's happening through text messages yep. too, where yep. they're saying, "Oh, yeah, click th click here," and now you're 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 downloading malware that way. Yep. I just did a post this morning on tax season, and mm -hmm. now right now a lot of people are waiting for tax returns to come in the mail, and they may get an email because the scammers know this mm -hmm. is the perfect time to play right into that. So they'll send an email that looks like it's from either the IRS yep. or from your accountant or something, and they'll click here to you know update your information, your banking information, where you want the deposit to go, yep. or something along those lines. And because you're expecting an email similar to that, you don't question it. You just right. click on there, and now you're giving away all this personal information. Yep. Yeah. No, I. You know, we use TurboTax, and I did it, and my wife got a message. She's like, is this is free? I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, you didn't even enter your info in. Why Why would you mm -hmm. get anything? And so, yeah, no, it's it's crazy how good they're getting. Um, but sometimes I think it's, it's, it's how naive some people can be, I guess, for lack of better words, of that it, they're so willing to trust technology, and, and people know that they can feed off of that. Mm -hmm. And I think we also think differently yeah. too when we're online. Yeah. We're very busy. We're trying to multitask and do a million things at once. And you know, if somebody came up to us and said, "Hey, listen, you know, I have a car out there and yep. it's got a million dollars in the trunk. Mm -hmm. I just need you to give me a thousand dollars so I can go down the street and get the key, yep. and then I'm going to give it back to you, right?" Or a thousand dollars in gift cards. <laughs> yes, the gift card scam. I mean, it's yes. all this stuff that yep. if somebody ever came up to you and spoke these words to your face. Yep you'd have a little bit more time to process and maybe because you can see mm -hmm. the facial reactions or, you, you know, there's an element that mm -hmm. we can see what the other person's, we get a feel for them, I guess, yep. where you don't really get that with the screen. So I think that that is another thing that plays right into um, the scammers, you know, yep. hands. And I always say that there's two things, urgency and emotion. Yep. They try to play off of that. You know, every, you know, if you look at some of these emails that are scams, everything's right now. You mm -hmm. got to go log in right now. Or you're going to be logged out or it's going to expire. And, you know, when we really sit back and think to ourselves, how much stuff in our lives has to happen right now? Mm -hmm. There's really not a lot of stuff, but because we're like, Ooh, well, I don't want to be logged out or I don't want my yeah. job to be expired or, you know, yep. we just act upon it. Yeah. I joke a lot of times I think I've gotten the ones of, you know, you're going to be arrested or FBI will show up. I'm like, mm -hmm. let's, let's play this out. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yeah. You know, um, well, so we talked about a couple, but what are some other common or more common cyber attack methods that you've seen maybe on the corporate level and even on the more uh, civilian level? Well, I always tell people it's a lot easier for someone to fool somebody than mm -hmm. to hack into their computer system. Yeah. So it's a lot e easier to do some kind of social engineering and create some kind of persona that's mm -hmm. going to contact the HR department or contact an office manager, you know, that kind of a thing. So mm -hmm. if we don't tell our employees, listen, no one's ever going to send you an email requesting, pretending it's me or thinking yeah. that it's me that's going to say wire money to this, this account. I mean, an example of that is Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. She was doing business with these hotels over in Germany. So there was a lot of correspondence back and forth with a variety of people in her organization. And her office manager got an invoice that looked very similar to all the other invoices mm -hmm. that they had been paying along the way, $400,000. She sent the money. And then she just happened to reach out to Barbara's assistant and say, hey, I just want to give you a heads up. I just sent that money for that mm -hmm. furniture, whatever it was. And she said, what are you talking about? We don't, we don't have an invoice like that open. So then they checked it, and the email yep. address was off by one letter, yep. and it was an I, a Chinese IP address. Mm -hmm. So whoop, that money's gone. Yeah. 
Yep. No, that's that's it's it's scary how easy it is. Um, yeah. But what I guess what are some other like do you have any other common ones that you've seen or that maybe what's like the number one that you think people fall for the most? The number one is the phishing emails. Okay. No question. No question. That and then following instructions because they believe that the email is from their boss or their superior yep. in some way that they, you know, the gift card one ties right into that. Hey, yep. I'm really busy. I'm in a meeting right now. Can you go out and get these gift cards and, uh, you know, just scratch off the back numbers, give mm-hmm. them to me and I'll pay you back when you get back. And we, I had that happen in my office. Yep. So here we talk about this stuff all the time. Yep. And one day, one of the women that works here, she's standing by my door and I said, what, with her coat on. And I said, why do you have your coat on? And she said, oh, I'm going to get all that stuff you need me to get <laughs> and I, said, I don't know what you're talking about yeah she said yeah we were just e- emailing me and then you wanted to, to jump over to text so we were texting back and forth you have a presentation oh, later on and yeah. you wanted me to go get those gift cards and i was just coming to let you know i was leaving and i thought no 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 we do this all the time this is not supposed to happen here yeah, so i yeah. actually did a video on that that i post every once in a while no that's that it can happen to anybody yeah no that's that that's crazy uh i mean at least she was checking before she left so <laughs> <laughs> that's true um what about do you have like any i'm trying to think um any more bizarre stories well, well one thing those? i would those say is just... that a lot of small companies and a lot of manufacturing yeah. companies that are that are small on the smaller side they really really truly believe in the bottom of their heart that no one is going to bother with them yeah because they say my information is really not that important you know what is someone going to do with the stuff that, that i do you right. know i manufacture bolts for you know ships at the navy yeah. you know what's the big deal <clears throat> but what they don't understand is if you say to yourself okay well maybe it's no use to them but what about if you didn't have any of yeah. your information for your company yeah. How long would you be able to operate not having any of your data or being able to contact any of your customers? That's and that's what they know. And they also know that when they place ransoms on these ransomware attacks, they'll make sure that whatever the ransom is, is within your budget. It mm-hmm. may be a stretch, but they're not going to say to a small organization, okay, your ransom is $4 million. You have to pay that because yeah. they know that they can't get that money. Right. But they may say, okay, your ransom is going to be fifty to $100,000. And so that may yeah. be a stretch for that small company, but they know that you know, push comes to shove, they can probably come up with it. And it's really crazy the way that yeah. these whole ransomware attacks work. They they have huge organizations. They have the people that, that do the attack. Then they yep. have the people that do the negotiating. They yep. have help desks that they can call if they have problems with some of this stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a business. It's a really under fortunately a, a big business and they're making a lot of money on it mm-hmm. and you know it, it would be easy to, for us just to say well if everybody stopped paying the ransom we could be yeah. uh, done with these whole things but you know sometimes it is the better option to pay the ransom and i know that yeah. that's not what anybody wants to hear but mm-hmm. you know if you have a hospital and it's all of a sudden now it's in lockdown and can't get any patient information yeah. or it's a town and they've taken over the 911 system mm-hmm. or all of the traffic lights you know these are times that you can't say oh, we have plenty of time on our hands to negotiate this to go yeah. create a bitcoin account i mean this is when time is of the essence and they know that as well so it's kind of, you know, what's yeah. the right answer? I don't know. No, that's that's crazy. Yeah, and it's it's a good point to bring up. Sometimes people do pay them and they just they just learn. And and that's I guess that's a, a next transition for my my next question and this is what um what are some things that companies in or or cities can start doing to kind of protect themselves um with cybersecurity? Well, I think the biggest thing we all need to start doing, and this is what I what I try to shout from my rooftop, and I try to get other people to help me shout this from their rooftop, mm-hmm. is that we all need to start talking about this stuff. Yep. Even just starting conversations and talking about this stuff. If you know you hear of a scam that's that's related towards seniors, make sure you tell your grandparents, mm-hmm. tell your parents, tell you know people like that because it's unfortunately this is something that has to become part of our everyday you know language yep. that we're talking about. And I also am a big believer that if employers taught their employees how to protect themselves, their homes, and their their families from you know identity theft and scammers and cyber criminals. That, that changes the mindset. So you're thinking more clearly about that all the time. So, and it's also, they would like to learn how to protect their home, their family, right? So now you get the buy-in from them because it's not just, okay, you got to learn how to protect the company because this is your job and you're going to get fired if you don't do it. No, it's like, okay, let's change the mindset of how, you know, what are your kids doing online? Yeah. All these smart devices we're buying and we're plugging in at home, you know, mm-hmm. is anyone looking at the security settings on these things? No. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that. But if, if you provided that education for your employees, then they would they would change the way they think about technology in general, and then mm-hmm. that would overflow into how they handle things when they're at work. 
Yeah, because you never know who you're talking to, right? Because there's always that one person in the family that is the go-to person for all things technical, you know, setting up Wi-Fi, setting up, you know, hey, I can't log into my account. Can you set this up so I just turn my laptop on and everything just opens up? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you never know. And then, you know, it's, as a company too, it, it like you mentioned, it's not so much em your employees too, because I might go home and maybe my wife got allowed someone into our network and now I'm connected and now they got to me. So it's not necessarily just, you know, worry about, you know, the employee is, is as long as they're educated, maybe they can teach their family some things and, and hopefully spread that. And, um, uh, yeah, that's, it's just the rabbit yeah. hole. And as it, we go to industry 4.0, right. And, that that connectivity and all that data, you just kind of open yourself up, right, for way more risk and other items um, such as mm -hmm. you know cybersecurity and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Well, what about you know? And we, I guess, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but you know, who ultimately is responsible for protecting data and and just everywhere from cybersecurity? Well, I mean, I think this is a whole, it takes a village. Everybody's yep. got to do their part, you know, when it comes to this stuff. Um, and we, again, we have to take the intimidation out of it. You, you know, I just did a podcast on the home router. Okay. And if you talk to the average person about, hey, why don't you go home and, you know, readjust your 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 home router or change the password or create another network, they, they would think, whoa, oh my goodness, I can't touch that thing. Like, yeah, I'll yeah. blow up or something. I'll yeah. never, I'll, we'll never have internet ever again. Yep. So nobody goes near it. So nobody, nobody mm -hmm. updates any passwords. Nobody changes the name of anything. Mm -hmm. So... I did a podcast and I literally just explained from the very beginning in very layman's terms of the things that you should watch out for, the name that you should be shouting out to the world that's your mm -hmm. wife, that's your, you know, your Wi-Fi, <clears throat> things yep. along those lines, just some basic safety precautions. And one of the things that people should be doing now, a lot of people are working at home and some of their employers mm -hmm. may have set this up for them, or if they're a smaller company, they may not have this set up, is to separate their work devices from the home, the home network, create a guest network yep. so that either all the kids and all their stuff is on the guest network and you're on the yep. main network or you have that guest network that just you um, have access to with work-related devices because, you know, you got to think the kids are on Xbox, you, the neighbors are coming over mm -hmm. with their iPads and all this stuff and, and everybody is, is connecting to the same network and that's that's not good. We don't, we don't want to be doing that. Oh, that's a good point. I should probably do that too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very easy. Yeah. People say, well, how do you do that? I say, well, I don't know who your internet provider is, but if you literally go to Google like, and mm -hmm. you say, let's just say it's Comcast. Yep. And you type in, you know, how do I create a guest network on my Comcast router? Yep. It's going to tell you, and it's also going to probably show, show you when you log into your Comcast account, if you, the little help mm -hmm. center, if you type that in, it's going to walk you right through that because they know people have these questions. Yeah, I think actually on their app, you can just turn it on, just to swipe it and it creates its own thing just from the app. Um, Perfect. What about, I know this is probably a big one you get asked, what about passwords? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, passwords. Well, I think this is why everybody needs to understand yeah. why it's, we all like to have the same email and yeah. the same password to everything yeah. because it's just too hard for us to remember things. Mm -hmm. But we need to know if our email and password is involved in a data breach from anywhere, right? Let's take mm -hmm. Grubhub. It's a little food delivery company and they had a data breach and it was passwords mm -hmm. and email. So you think, well, what's the big deal? It's just my email, my password. Right, but if that's the same email and password that you use for your Bank of America, for mm -hmm. your Facebook, for your LinkedIn, for your finances, then they can get into any of those. If that's the only thing is the password and the email, if it's the exact same thing for all of your accounts, and chances are your account, one of your accounts somewhere along the lines has been involved in a data breach, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's going to let, give them access to everything. Mm -hmm. So I suggest having pass phrases. Okay. So it could be anything, you know, Mary had a little lamb on LinkedIn, you know, yep. in 1975 or some, something along yep. those lines. So it's just something that you're remembering all the, the pass phrase. So then the only thing you need to remember is whatever it is you're at when yeah. you're, um, you know, on that account. Now yeah. you got to be careful with that too, because again, if somebody realizes that Mary had a little lamb is the beginning of all of your things. Yeah. And then the only thing you change at the end is the actual app that it's on <clears throat> so you have to kind yeah, of i have leave. heard that that sentences are, are like the the new the new way to do it you know instead yeah, of past the, phrases yeah, yeah past phrases in, instead of you know numbers uppercase symbols um, i've heard that those have actually become easier to to guess because there's typically a common string that people use 
you know, where a phrase is, is a little bit more secure and protected. Mm -hmm. And if you go to, it's a website, it's have I been pwned. It's okay. Yep. So it's have I yep. been, and it's pwned, P-W-N-E-D.com. Yep. You can go there and you can look up if your emails have been involved in the data breach, mm -hmm. if your passwords have been involved in a data breach. And I also do recommend too, that it's, you know, sometimes we just get one email 10 years ago and yep. we keep that for the rest of our lives. You know, if it, you do see that your email has been involved in a data breach, maybe get a new one. Yeah. You know, it's not the end of the world to get a new, any new email. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that's scary for some people, but yeah, it is. It is actually pretty easy. Um, you know, Google's you can make them in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, no problem. Um, all right. It, well, we we talked about it a little bit, but I want to get more more info. You know, you mentioned uh, the DoD and kind of some things that are coming. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about that and and and, and some of the the info you want to share with everybody. Okay, so this is the message that I'm trying to let everybody know. This is the train coming down the tracks, and yep. manufacturing is a big industry that does a lot of governmental work with the Department of Defense. So they have a new <clears throat> cybersecurity re requirement that they're rolling out over the next five years. It's called mm. CMMC, the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. And anybody who has a contract with the DOD is going to be required to achieve this. So the DOD doesn't think it's that heavy of a lift, though, because a lot of the requirements that are in there are already currently supposed to be being done, yep. right? So a few years ago, they put out this requirement. It's called NIST 800-171. And basically, you, you did a self-attestation that, mm -hmm. yes, 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 we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. But a lot of companies aren't doing anything. So yep. now the DOD is going to send in a third-party assessor Okay. So now the chickens are coming home to roost because now this third party person is going to come in and they're going to say, show me this, let's do this. You know, yep. And it's going to be a, a big lift for people that haven't been doing anything. So I'm trying to let everybody know that the sooner that they get going with this, the, the easier it's going to be and the less expensive it's going to be. Because yep. if, every, if it's going to be required of everybody over the next five years, if you get two years down, down the pike, that's, you know, more people that are going to need it. Mm -hmm. There's not as many people out there necessarily to be helping them with this. So you're going to need to find somebody and um, it's going to get more expensive if all of a sudden you get your contract and when it's granted, you don't have this uh, requirement done. Yep. Because a lot of a lot of many manufacturers, the DOD is a big part of their business. Yep. So they can't lose that. Some of them, if it's not, if it's only a little tiny bit, then they may just say, you know what, we're not going to do that anymore. Um, so it's just something that I want people to to be aware of. So if you're looking at new contracts, if you have a contract manager, whoever it is you get your contracts right. from, you know, just kind of keep an eye out for this. Now, how how far down the chain do you think that'll go? So, is it is it the first person in line that's working with the DoD? Because sometimes you have I have a contract with the DoD, but then I buy parts from this individual, right? And it kind of goes down the chain. Do you see it kind of trickling down? You know, that company said, okay, now we're going to require, you know, maybe we have a third party assessor come in to make sure your stuff is acceptable and stuff like that. Yes, absolutely. And that's the thing too, is it's not just the primes. It's yep. a lot of the, the subs that are going to be held to, the, to yep. that requirement as well, because the prime is not going to want to take the risk right. of not knowing and be able to verify for themselves that yep. the you know subs are doing that. And like you said, there's a lot of money there. So, I mean, no one's going to want to give that up. So I, I, I definitely see that, you know, kind of trickling down and having a waterfall effect on pretty much everybody. Yeah, it's starting with the DOD, yep. and then they're going to be rolling it to the other government agencies, yep. Homeland Security, Department of Justice. Like, and then, you know, I mean, we have to be realistic. Cybersecurity is not going away. Right. And eventually we're going to have to yep. pay attention to it, whether we want to or because we're being, you know, forced to. Yep. And nobody wants to be in a position where, let's say that there is some kind of big breach and some of your big customers, you know, say to you, well, what were you doing to protect the data yep. beforehand? And, you yeah. know, you say, well, we, we, we just thought it was kind of being protected. You know, that's protected. not going to hold yeah. up. Yeah. That's not going to yeah. hold any weight. So yeah. that's what we need to start thinking about. Is, yep. uh... No, definitely. Uh, well, Dana, before we kind of wrap things up, I typically like to open everything up and and kind of give you a chance to, to discuss or share anything that maybe uh, we didn't get to. Um, do you have anything today? 
Uh, well, if anybody is thinking about or they, they think they may yep. need help with CMMC, you can always reach out to me. I don't do that, but I yep. know a ton of people that do. Yep. And you can also go over to YouTube and just check out my channel because I have hundreds of videos over there. Yeah, of course. Um, so if you just type in CMMC into YouTube uh, and then go by highest views, my yep. videos will show up there. And so hopefully if there's yep. a category or a topic or something, um, you can watch those. But, you know, please feel free to reach out because I just yep. this is such an important thing to me personally yep. that I want to make sure that people that need help can find the help. And yeah. and because I know a variety of them, if you're a smaller company, we can look around to some of the smaller companies that you know yeah. that I have. If you have a big company, you know, we'll, you know, team you up with a bigger company. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and we'll definitely okay. put your YouTube in our show notes um, for those okay. listening Good. so that they can get they can just use that to jump right there. Uh, well Dana, thank you so much. Like I said, it's your topic's a little bit more eye opening because I think it's one of those things where uh, people know of it. They just don't really understand the risks. And I think you're doing a great job to help clarify that for everybody. Thanks. Um, yeah. And so, so thank you. And, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Until next time. This podcast was brought to you by Promise Incorporated. Hosted by Matthew Rawl. Produced by myself, Lauren Rawl. Mixed and edited by Ben Parsons. Please make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us at podcast at promisinc.com.